Uh, this is a big uh, moment for me. My wife and I just had our first baby. Yeah, a few months ago. Thank you. We waited. We wanted to wait until the end of the world. So it's a great time. We're repopulating. How about that? You're welcome, everybody. No, it's great. The one thing I've learned from having a baby is that everybody knows how you should raise your kid. Isn't that amazing? Everybody knows exactly how you should raise your child. And then you look around and you're like, hey, wait a minute, you guys did a pretty bad job. What happened? Were you not listening to everybody else's advice? What went wrong? People are already telling us stuff. They're like, how much screen time we should allow? That's a big hot topic. Screen, how much screen time do you allow? So my wife and I, we've looked into this and we're going with 100%. 100% screens, that's right. All screens, all the time. I was ready at the hospital. The second my baby came into the world, I put a virtual reality helmet right on her head. And my plan is to let her think she's in Mario Kart for 18 years. That's what we're doing. Mario Kart for 18 years, and on her 18th birthday, I'm gonna unplug her from the Matrix and just let her go. Just go, hey, I'm your dad. You can't shoot turtles at people anymore when you get upset and you have to move out. But good luck out there. If you have any questions, ask your mom. It's, uh, it's fun, a lot of decisions we're gonna have to make, you know? People are already asking us, what school? What school do you send? Because there's all these choices, you know? Private schools and charter schools. We're big believers in public schools, okay? Yeah, we're gonna send her a public school, and it's not just because we're broke. That's a coincidence. <laughs> It just so happens that the free one best lines up with our ideals, okay? I don't know, sometimes it works out that way. I used to live in Los Angeles for a long time and they have a million private schools in LA, so many choices. And there was this one I used to drive by all the time, it was called the Harvard Preschool. Yeah, it's a real thing, the Harvard Preschool. And I used to think, what is going on that is so much more advanced at the Harvard Preschool? Is it more rigorous finger painting, is that what it is? Are they making connections that they can use later in life? It's like, oh no, I'm gonna get this job. I went to preschool with this dude. <laughs> yeah, he's a good guy. We were in the same horsey group. <laughs> but I used to wonder, I was like, how is it even legal, right? Can you just call yourself the Harvard? Isn't big Harvard gonna get upset? And, the re and I looked into it, and the reason why, I'm not making this up, the reason why they could call it the Harvard preschool is because it was on Harvard Street. Oh. Yeah, right? How good a hustle is that? They opened up a school on Harvard Street to trick these rich, dumb LA parents into sending their kids to the Harvard preschool. It's genius, it's inspiring to me, is what it is, because I live in Portland, near Apple Street, and I've started my own business, Apple Computers. Yes, we're not affiliated with the other Apple, but we do sell laptops I steal at Starbucks, so. If you guys uh, need someone to watch that for you while you use the bathroom, I'm your guy. <laughs> but uh, I'll tell you who was really excited, my mom. My mom was so excited because it's her first grandbaby, okay? And she deserves some good news because she's had a tough year. On top of everything else, her name is Karen. It's a real name. <laughs> so real life Karens, people forget about the real Karens. There's a lot of blowback out there. <laughs> It's been tough for her, and I just wish that insult had been around when I was a kid. That would have helped me out quite a bit. <laughs> As a jerk 12-year-old to have that in my back pocket anytime I needed it, I would have killed for that. It's like, oh, I need to finish my vegetables? Okay, Karen, let's take it easy. <laughs> TV time's up? That's a real Karen move to have a TV time. I don't... <laughs> She's a great mom, you know. Even before the baby, she'd call me all the time. And she would do this annoying thing though, no matter what time of day my mom would call me, she'd apologize for waking me up. <laughs> Anybody else have that? She's like, oh, I'm sorry, did I wake you? Oh, I'm sorry, did I just wake you up? It's like, no, mom, it's 12.45 in the afternoon, okay? How lazy do you think I am? I've been up for 20 minutes already, give me a break. <laughs> My mom uh, wanted to see Hamilton. She'd never seen Hamilton, the musical, and uh, I don't want to brag, but I do have a Disney Plus password, okay? <laughs> yes, I used to have, uh, I upgraded to Disney Plus. I used to have Knott's Berry Farm TV. It's not as good. <laughs> yeah, it's, they only have one show. It's a live stream of the parking lot where a dude's getting beaten up with his own flip-flop. It's not a great show. <laughs> 
So I got to Disney Plus now, and I loaned uh, my mom the password so she could watch Hamilton. And uh, three hours later, I get a review from my mom, which I think is the most hilarious review of Hamilton of all time. It's just one text, and it says, I didn't know it was a rap thing. <laughs> Yeah, Mom, it's a rap thing. And I don't think you're helping with the whole Karen problem. I would keep that one to yourself. <laughs> but I am, uh, you know, optimistic about the future, you know? It's uh, uh, great having a baby now. My wife was uh, amazing during the pregnancy. You know, she uh, did have some back pain, as I know can happen, some sciatica. So she went to see an acupuncturist to uh, try and help with that. And the acupuncturist was great, helped her out, and they told her, you know, you know, in the East, pregnant women are exalted and they're honored and they're dressed in white. And it's not like in the West where, you know, we only care about the babies, but we respect the pregnant women. And I was like, that's great, you know? And then she went to the front desk to, and they told her, we don't accept your insurance. It's like, oh, that's the part of Western medicine you've decided to adopt the old HMO part? Thank you for that. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. We don't cover uh, back chakras, just head and neck chakras. And if you want to do the cupping, that's going to be out of pocket as well because you're on the yin plan. What you want to be on is the yang plan. And that would, yeah, and you can't even be on the yang plan because of your pre existing chi issues. So. <laughs> I, <laughs> And then I thought, I should go to the doctor, you know, because it's been so long since I've been to the doctor and I want to make sure I'm going to live long enough to take care of this baby. So I go to this doctor. And one thing I forgot about, because it's been so long, is that they weigh you in. When you go to the doctor, there's a weigh in, right? And I was not ready for that. It's been a long quarantine for me. And there is no Peloton in our house, okay? There's no Peloton. There's no Nordic track. We spent all our money on Uber Eats, okay? That's where every stimulus dollar went to support the local burrito economy. And that's the fattest you're gonna feel, by the way. The fattest you're ever gonna feel is not when you're on a scale. The fattest you're ever gonna feel is when you take too big a bite of your burrito and you get some of the wrapper in your mouth. Have you ever done that before? That's a fat feeling. And the only thing that makes you feel fatter than that is when you decide to just swallow the bite. Right? I can't go digging around in there looking for wrapper. I might get some avocado, okay? That's risky. I go to this doctor, you know, weighing a little heavy, and the doctor addresses it. She brings it up, my weight, but to me, a very insulting way, because she looks at me, and this is what she says. She goes, uh, hey, Andrew, have you been eating a lot of canned food? That's what she said, canned, excuse me, canned food? Do I look fat and poor? What happened? Why does it have to be canned food? I can't be like a whiskey fat guy or a steak fat guy or like, why, why does it have to be? It's like, no, hey, Mr. SpaghettiOs, what's with all the stag chili? What's going on, buddy? I think it's because she saw my health insurance plan. You know what I mean? She can, she, she, she can see exactly how much money I have. It's like, oh, he's on the bronze plan. He didn't have Wendy's money, you know? He doesn't have four for four. How's it physically possible? Doctors are elitists. They, they make judgments about you based on your economic status. Because I'll complain about my shoulder. She's like, oh, have you been doing a lot of sign spinning? Yeah, that can be... That can be brutal for shoulders. Have you been wearing a barrel instead of clothing? You want to be careful with that. <laughs> Now, I want to start uh, working out, you know, getting better shape. I like yoga. I can do yoga at home. I've been, I like doing yoga at home, you know? It's better that way. I don't like going to the yoga studios. Forget those. Too judgmental. Because they make, they create this image of themselves, yoga studios, of being welcoming and all are accepted. And that's not the way it is. Because I go into a yoga studio, I feel very judged immediately. First of all, I have none of the gear. I don't, have, I don't look like a yoga dude. I have none of the yoga clothes. I have no Lululemon, nothing, okay? It's all champion, just head to toe, champion. Baggy basketball shorts with paint stains on them. They know I suck at yoga, okay, by looking at me. And I do suck, I try my hardest, but I suck, you know? So I'm trying to do my tree right, and I'm falling over. And whenever these condescending yoga instructors instructors see you struggle at yoga, they always come over and say the same thing. It's go, hey, um, if it's too difficult, you can just take a child's pose. 
And what a child's pose is, is the physical manifestation of giving up. It's putting your head down, your butt in the air, and being quiet like you got in trouble in the third grade. That's what a child's pose is. Yeah, so I don't do it. I don't give them the satisfaction of seeing me take a child's pose, but I do wish I could use that in other times in my life when things get too difficult, you know? It's like, oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Slater, but uh, your credit card's been declined. You know what? I'm gonna take a quick child's pose and let you guys uh, cut up the check. <laughs> Gotta do something. Uh, a friend of mine, he's a little heavier than me, just to be honest, and uh, the way he was gonna get into shape was to do CrossFit which I think you know is the most extreme workout program in the world. And he was worried, but he was worried for the wrong reason. Because this is what he told me. He goes, yeah, I want to do CrossFit, but I'm worried I'll get too buff. <laughs> That's what you're worried about? Getting too... Let me give you a little advice, okay? If you ever start to get kind of buff, just quit. You can just quit CrossFit. If you're in the danger zone of buffness, if you feel little abs starting to poke out, just give up. And if you're worried about quitting, I will help you quit, okay? I'm an amazing quitter. I quit Fitbit, all right? Do you know how hard it is to quit Fitbit? You have to like stop moving. I did it. But I'm actually jealous of him, because what a, what a positive attitude. What a great way to live your life to just always be worried about best case scenarios. <laughs> I wish I had that. You know, I was like, hey, Andrew, you want to go in on these Powerball tickets? No. I'm worried about yacht maintenance. I don't want to risk it. <laughs> you got to crew those things. It's a whole mess, man. <laughs> I do, would like to go on a yacht sometime soon. You know what I mean? I love going on boats. That's what I'm going to do. Vacation, I'm gonna go on a big boat and do my favorite thing when you're on a boat is I just wave at strangers. Isn't that the best? You go on a boat, you can wave to anybody. And what do they do? They wave back. Everyone is so friendly when they're floating. I don't understand why. Be like, hey, I'm on a boat. Yeah, I'm on a boat too, hi. What a coincidence. All I know is it doesn't work that way on land. You can't be on solid ground and wave to strangers, okay? You ever wave to someone you think you know, but they turn out to be a stranger? Is there a worse feeling in the world? You're like, hey, Jeremy, it's me, Andrew. Oh, oh, no, 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 oh my gosh, no, 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 I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, I thought we are on a boat. I didn't know, I apologize. I'm sorry. Yeah, so uh, my wife and I, you know, we uh, live in Portland, Oregon. That's where we live. Sure, why not? And it's not like how they make it look on the news, okay? It's not World War III every night, I promise. But we have a problem in Portland. We've been inundated with free little libraries. Yeah, they've taken over the city. I don't know if you know what these things are, but they're these little birdhouses people put in front of their real house and fill with their crappiest books. Just whatever stupid throwaway book. I check every free little library. There's never a good book in there, all right? Here's the inventory at every free little library. It's seven weight loss books, a German English dictionary, and an already filled out Sudoku. That's every single free little library I've ever seen in my life. And maybe, maybe the free little library would be a cool idea if the big library wasn't already free. You know what I mean? I can go get all the books. Why are you competing with the big library? That's a great social service. It's not like I'm gonna buy a house and put out front the free little fire department. <laughs> you know, just an adorable little red fire station and inside is a damp sponge for all of your fire <laughs> emergencies. <laughs> Portland's a little different, you know. I lived in LA for a while and uh, like in LA, for instance, if you wanted to get rid of an old couch, you would just take it out to the front curb, and that was it. Yeah, that was the whole system, and nature would take the couch away. I don't know how it worked, <laughs> but it worked every time. And in Portland, they kind of do the same thing, but a little different. In Portland, if you want to get rid of an old couch, you take it out to the front curb, and then you put a sign on it that says free. And like, oh, thank you for the price check on the trash couch, I appreciate that. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've been driving by abandoned furniture and been like, hey, honey, do you think we could afford that? Do you think, do you think they'll take half off for the pee stains? What do you think, dear? I know 
what you're thinking. You're like, yeah, put a sign that says free because it'll get rid of it faster. And no, no, that's not the fastest way to get rid of your old junk, okay? Here's the fastest way to get rid of your old stuff. Put it in a big Amazon box and leave it on your front porch. <laughs> yeah, that's how I get rid of everything. I don't, I, all my trash, it all goes in Amazon boxes. I don't even sort my recyclables anymore. I just put it all out there and they just take it away. It's a great system. <laughs> yeah, see, now we're thinking. Yeah, we bought a house in uh, Portland, and so when all this craziness happened, I was so worried, you know, about money and stuff, and I started reading up about what to do in an economic emergency, you know, and there's a lot out there to read, but they always write this stuff for people who are already good with their money. You ever notice that? It's like, hey, don't take money out of your retirement. Instead, withdraw some money from your emergency fund. Like, oh, thank you. Yeah, I should have thought of the emergency fund. Was there an option C? Was there a back to this thing? They need to write economic advice columns for people who are bad with their money. You know, like, hey, don't put all your bills on credit cards. Instead, here's a list of 10 unguarded construction sites you can steal copper wire from. I said, okay. Now that is helpful, thank you. I can hit that one on the way home from my house. No, I was uh, so worried about money. You know, I looked into, uh, getting a job, like a real job. I've been doing comedy so long, but I was like, I better be responsible. I got a baby on the way. I better look and see if there's any jobs out there and uh, it's not great. I don't know if anybody's looking for a job, but that's the worst. That is the worst because it doesn't matter how crappy the job is. Now, in the description of what they're looking for in an applicant, everybody has to be a rock star. That's their favorite word. It doesn't matter what the job is, but they need a rock star. We need an HR rock star. Someone who's gonna rock it up. Like, is that what you want, really? Really? Are you familiar with the behaviors of rock stars? I don't think that is what you're looking for. You know, it's like, yeah, we need a real rock star. You know, someone who'll show up three hours late, dangerously high. When things get boring, they'll bite the head off a pigeon. That's what we're looking for. And our new HR rep. <laughs> but that's not why they say they need a rock star, right? They're just trying to make the job sound cooler. You know, it's very condescending. But has that ever worked? Has anybody ever been tricked out here tonight at their job into thinking that you are actually a rock star? It's like, oh man, I got 13 browser tabs open right now. <laughs> just like Keith Richards, all right. <laughs> I've been trying to like get organized with my finances. It's tough though, because I still have Wells Fargo as my bank. I know that's a bad start. And everyone's always asked me, why, why are you still with Wells Fargo? And let me tell you why I'm sticking it out with Wells Fargo. Because I don't want to miss out on the next class action lawsuit, okay? Yeah, I can feel it. I got another $90 coming my way soon. Any day now. You, know, you gotta be, you gotta be careful. If you're gonna have Wells Fargo as your bank, you gotta stay up one step ahead because they're always up to something, you know. So I get this email from them uh, the other day, and it said, uh, "Congratulations," which was a red flag right there because they should know of all people, there's nothing to congratulate me about when it comes to my finances. <laughs> so they said, "Congratulations, Andrew. We've raised your debit card limit." It's like debit card. I didn't know I had a debit card. I thought your debit card limit was just how much money you had in the bank, right? And that is what it is. I looked into it, that is. So they were just sending me a passive aggressive email to say, hey, you know, you could try putting more money in the bank. Have you ever thought about that? We don't have a $700 hard cap here at Wells Fargo checking. So if you have some money under the mattress or something, feel free to drop it by. But I am excited to get back on the road, you know, get back out there and uh, start traveling again. Although I have to say, I've never been good at traveling, never been good at flying. Like one time, I got dropped off at the airport, I got on my car, and I realized I'd forgotten my luggage. Yeah, anybody ever do that before? Just straight up bring nothing with them? <laughs> for a week-long trip, by the way. Not a quick stop, a week-long trip. And it was too late to go home to get my stuff, so now I had to just walk into the airport like a maniac with nothing. 
And guess what? That's a pre pretty suspicious look, okay? To go into the airport empty-handed. It's like, oh, one ticket anywhere, please. It doesn't really matter where. <laughs> Get off the plane in Indiana with nothing, like I'm Jason Bourne or something. I've been dropped in <laughs> for a mission, which is to just go to Walmart and buy a bunch of stuff. <laughs> And that's what I did. I went to Walmart, bought a week's worth of supplies at Walmart. It felt like I was sponsored by Walmart for the week. <laughs> like I was the worst NBA player of all time. I was like, oh man, I got the Walmart deal. <laughs> <laughs> and that was all very strange. But nothing was as weird as the return trip, <laughs> where now I'm walking through the Indiana airport with two Walmart plastic sacks. <laughs> filled with my dirty socks and underwear as my luggage. And that will get you some looks, okay? And by the way, you can't check Walmart plastic sacks. I tried, all right? That's a carry-on. So I had to go through security with these dumb Walmart bags, everybody laughing at me, and I tried to just walk through the x-ray machine. No, he's like, put them on the conveyor belt. Really? You gotta x-ray these? Use your eyes, man, they're see-through. I was so embarrassed. I, I called my wife. I was like, oh my gosh, everyone's making fun of me in these dumb Walmart sacks. And this is what she said to make me feel better. She goes, uh, well, did you tie the sacks shut? <laughs> oh yeah, that would have classed it up. I should have tied my Walmart plastic sacks. I think that was in GQ, that every man should know to tie his sack shut at the airport. Of you, some of you, you're probably thinking, well, why didn't you just throw them away? <laughs> no, that was a week's worth of brand new outfits from Walmart. I'm not just gonna toss away $36 like that. <laughs> so now I'm just sitting there and uh, I've kind of hidden the Walmart bags under my chair so no one makes fun of me anymore. And I'm just waiting for him to call my group. And uh, like I said, I, I would fly every weekend, you know, and, I, and I'm smart because I stick to one airline. That's the key. If you fly all the time, stick to one airline because every once in a while, they will bump you up to first class. And yeah, I got bumped up to first class on my Walmart plastic sacks flight. You've never seen more confused faces in your life than when they call first class and I stand up with my sacks like some rube who's seeing an airplane for the first time. <laughs> I felt like I was in Pretty Woman. You know, I was like, oh, remember me? <laughs> Big mistake. <laughs> Huge. <laughs> I get on the plane, the flight attendant's confused, but before she can say anything, I go, please, miss, hang these with the other coats, and... Um, <laughs> Yes, I will have some champagne. No, I don't need a glass. Just fill up the Wendy's cup and we can be on our way. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you so much. You guys have been a great crowd. My name's Andrew Slater.